When the apocalypse comes, it won't be zombies or aliens. It'll be giant freaking bugs. And you can count on that. The movie kicks off with our main man Cooper, who's fashionably late for work and busy exchanging some heated fatherly banter on the phone. Dad's fuming about Cooper's endless shenanigans and how they tarnish the family's image. Cooper tries to tell Pops it's not the end of the world, and while doing so, he dodges a car like a boss. Eventually, he rolls into the office where he works the phones at a clinic. As he makes his way to his desk, he tosses out some cheesy one-liners about his co-workers. But before he can get his headset on, his boss Morin summons him for a little chat. Turns out she's ready to fire Cooper for being a little too friendly with clients. But before Morin can drop the axe, a deafening noise crashes the party, and everyone in the office passes out. A few hours later, the whole office looks like a spider web convention. Those creepy crawlies are still hanging around, turning people into cocoon burritos. Delicious. Cooper wakes up, slips out of his silky prison, and bam, he's face to face with a giant bug. After a wild tussle, Cooper sends it packing. Once the dust settles, he finds Morin trapped in a cocoon nearby. He busts her out, but she's disoriented and confused about this buggy apocalypse. Then she remembers her daughter was supposed to meet her, so they rush outside only to find the streets looking like a giant bug buffet. They spot Morin's daughter, Sarah, cocooned in a car, and Cooper swoops in to help. Cooper rescues Sarah, but she mistakes him for a creeper and rewards him with a face full of pepper spray. Before they can recover, a huge wasp-like bug snatches Morin and flies off. Sarah screams as her mom gets an unwanted aerial tour. Cooper and Sarah know they need to bounce, but the streets are swarming with more giant bugs. Sarah figures out these critters are all about that noise after accidentally knocking over a trash can. She triggers her car alarm, and the bugs swarm her like it's a sale at Bug Mart. They use the distraction to make a break for it and end up in a bar, hoping to find a safe haven. Sarah's freaking out about her mom, and Cooper's got his own bug-related baggage. Sarah wants to help the bar patrons, but Cooper's not so sure. You never know how people react, and explaining a bug apocalypse is just plain exhausting. Trust me, I'm doing it now. Just then, a dude named Hugo grabs Sarah by the neck. Cooper tries to play hero but gets a fist sandwich instead. The big bad bug makes a comeback and sets its sights on Cooper. Hugo's distracted by Sarah, and in a moment of chaos, he drops the cash register, squashing the bug like a pancake. Sarah decides it's time to wake the rest of the bar. Cindy, Albert, Leechy, Roger, PJ, and a cop. The gang huddles up to brainstorm their next move. Roger suggests taking his truck, but Sarah warns they'll just bring more bugs to the party. Roger and PJ throw caution to the wind and hop in anyway. The engine roars, and the bugs descend like it's the battle of the bands. PJ makes a leap for freedom, but he breaks his leg and gets steamrolled by the out-of-control truck. Meanwhile, Roger gets scooped up by some tentacled monsters, and in the chaos, the poor cop bites the dust courtesy of these monstrous insects. So, Albert, Hugo's dad, gets stung by this mysterious insect, right? And everyone's like, oh no, what's gonna happen? The squad takes refuge in the nearest building. Probably not up to code, but beggars can't be choosers. Leechy, resident adventurer, suggests they play Dora the Explorer and climb to the roof. Up there, they see this funky red smoke and a bunch of wasp wannabes zooming off. Nobody has a clue what to do until Cooper's like, hey, my retired military dad has a bunker full of cool stuff. Talk about perfect timing. Just when they think they've found a solution, a bunch of bugs decide to join the party. Leechy does some sort of interpretive dance and scares them away. Turns out these creepy crawlies are blind as bats and they rely completely on sound. The group gets all Sherlock Holmes on this mystery and lures a roach into a closet. Leechy wants to milk it like a snake. Which, ew. Everyone else is grossed out, but they're like, fine, do it. While waiting for Leechy's insect milk report, the gang reminisces about their lives pre-bug apocalypse. Then they hear this painful, whistle-like sound that's totally ruining the vibe. Leechy discovers that the venom is a sedative with a side of crimson gas, just like that weird sky smoke. The crew decides to crash in the building and hit up Cooper's dad's bunker in the morning, stopping by their homes along the way for some clean undies. Cooper's trying to figure out where he knows Sarah from, but he can't sleep. He goes on a late-night snack run and gets spooked by some tiny insects. And Cindy, who pops up like a ninja. Cindy's like, hey, I work in TV. Let's hit up the studio so we can contact the world and maybe snag some free snacks. Cooper agrees, but Cindy's like, nah, just you and me, babe. Cooper's not feeling it, though. The next morning, the gang wakes up to the sound of their roach prisoner trying to escape. Albert goes full-on exterminator mode, and everyone's like, yeah, it's time to dip. Leechy wants to stay and wake more people up, thinking they'll have a better chance against the bugs with more bodies. The rest of the group heads for town, but Cooper wants a little one-on-one -on -one with Sarah. She's not having it, though. And they end up trading sarcastic barbs like a sitcom couple. The squad reaches Albert and Hugo's place and check on Hugo's sick mom. The woman wait outside where Sarah discovers a note with Cooper's number. Smooth, right? Meanwhile, Hugo's mom has sadly passed away. Albert emerges with a rifle, ready for action. But Cooper's like, dude, shooting will only bring more bugs. Albert's having none of it though. And the bug fighting adventure continues. So the squad rolls up to Cindy's bro's crib. And what do they find? 
A bunch of folks wrapped up like leftover Chipotle burritos in the front yard. Cindy's brother pops out of the garage, looking like a total mutant. Part dude, part insect. He's just like me, for real. He attacks the crew, and Hugo ends up having to go all pitchfork Picasso on him to save Cindy. Inside, everyone's on edge. Sarah patches up Cooper while he asks her to make a run for it if he starts going all monstery. Cooper confesses he's always dreamed of a post-apocalyptic world where he could live in the woods with the girl like Sarah and become the next Adam and Eve. Smooth, Cooper. Real smooth. They bond over their tragic backstories. You know, classic apocalyptic flirting. Later, Cooper's catching some Z's when Cindy wakes him up for a heart-to-heart. -heart. She reminisces about her brother being a stand-up guy, then decides she wants Cooper to be her new boo. She tries to make a move, but Cooper's like, Nah, girl, I got my apocalypse bay. Cindy storms off in a huff. The next day, Sarah thinks she's found the monster HQ, but Cooper warns her it's a risky mission. Just then, a whole swarm of bugs crashes their pity party. Everyone's playing it cool, but Cindy gets all jelly when she spots Cooper and Sarah holding hands. She starts screaming and Albert has to go full on Call of Duty on her to stop the bugs from swarming. Now it's an all out bug brawl. Albert gets snagged by a bug, but Cooper saves him in the nick of time. Then Cooper gets attacked, and just as Sarah tries to help, she's scooped up by a massive wasp and whisked away. Cooper, Albert, and Hugo finally reach their destination, but Cooper's dad won't stop yelling for his dog Lucy. Albert's feeling funky, and next thing you know, he's losing teeth and turning mutant. Just when things are about to get real ugly, Albert's son steps in and takes him out, just like his dad taught him. Man, this family's got issues. Bug apocalypse was upon them, and it was raining insects like an entomologist's dream gone awry. Cooper, his dad Ethan, and their pal Hugo find themselves bug blasting their way out of a swarm, only to find Lucy, who now seems to have more legs than a caterpillar's dance troupe. Ethan pulls off a classic dad move, distracting Lucy with her favorite toy. They make a run for it, diving into a bunker where they have a quick game of lights out before catching some Z's. Later on, we're treated to a flashback where Cooper nearly becomes a car pancake, but it turns out Sarah was the one behind the wheel. Smooth operator Cooper slips her his digits, all under the guise of insurance deeds. Fast forward to the breakfast, where Ethan channels his inner bear grills, planning their escape route with a side of dad knows best. Cooper, feeling all grown up, wants to play hero and save Sarah, but Ethan's having none of it. Defiant, Cooper goes rogue to save his damsel, only to end up in the world's weirdest jail with an old man who's all about that leechy life. Turns out that big old nest of creepy crawlies is a giant bug bomb waiting to explode. Meanwhile, Sarah's busy playing Survivor, Insect Edition, inside the nest. Back in Bugtown Jail, Cooper's trying to prove he's not affected by suggesting a Show Me Your Bite Marks contest, and it turns out Ethan's been bitten. Drama. Commence an epic gunfight turned bug battle royale, with the old guy making a beetle full transformation, <laughs> before meeting his maker. Cooper's dad plays exterminator on the baddies, and the trio skedaddles with guns, bombs, and other goodies. As Sarah channels her inner Lara Croft in the nest, she finds the queen bug's egg extravaganza. You get it? Egg? Meanwhile, Ethan, Cooper, and Hugo go full toward the infestation on some conveniently placed bikes. Ethan spills the beans on how he got stuck. It involved a heroic dog rescue, a barking frenzy, and a close encounter with the six-legged kind. The team rocks up at a cliff and stumbles upon a massive nest of bugs that even a raid commercial couldn't handle. Ethan, always the overachiever, is dead set on becoming their exterminator. Sarah, meanwhile, realizes that the queen bug has a taste for human burritos, cocoon style. She tries to make a run for it, but a mutant baby bug has her like, oh my god, what is that? and she lets out a scream that could rival a Justin Bieber fan. Sarah knows she's got to bounce ASAP. Ethan starts feeling sick, probably from all the bug guts. Cooper offers to help, but Hugo's like, nah, and chains him to a tree. Hugo, with nothing to lose, decides to go all James Bond on the nest and blow it sky high. He bids his son farewell and heads off. Cut to Ethan creeping near the nest entrance. Hugo wakes up, frees Cooper like a boss, and despite the obvious, stay away from the giant bug nest memo, they press on. Sarah's on high alert, listening like a hawk, or a bat, whichever's better. Ethan sneaks up and she freaks, mistaking him for a roach in a human costume, and stamps his hand. Ouch. Introductions follow, and Ethan spills his master plan. Sarah's still sad about her mom, but Ethan cheers her up with his, let's blow this joint attitude. Ethan convinces Sarah to be his GPS to the Queen's crib. They arrive, but Queen Bug is MIA. Ethan tells Sarah to bounce while he goes all Dante's Inferno on the place. But surprise, surprise, Queen Bug drops down from above, ready to rumble. Ethan shoots, but this ain't no easy bug squashing situation. Cooper and Hugo hear their shots and come running like the A-team. Queen Bug starts making a racket that would put Metallica to shame. Lucky for Hugo, he's practically deaf, so he's unfazed. He tosses some explosives into her mouth. Talk about explosive taste. Cooper keeps shooting until his dad starts turning into a monster. Yikes. The boys make a break for it. Cooper hits the big red button and the nest goes up in flames like a 4th of July fireworks show. Cooper wakes up in the hospital with Sarah and Hugo visiting. They open a window and hear sweet, sweet bird song instead of creepy bug noises. Hugo finally mans up and asks Sarah out. As a team, they start freeing the cocoon peeps. But their victory dance is cut short when they see something awful. 
Sequel bait, perhaps? The mystery continues. More of the story? Bug off!